part of the food system, the bad white powder. And let's bring up on stage then um, Darko Mandic uh, from Elibio. Come on up on stage, Darko. Ilan Samish will be with us remotely um, from Amai Proteins. Sara Seri from Wellybite. Sara, there you come. Very good then. And James Deadman from Fatser Food Tech. Come up on stage here. Take your seats and please share the microphones. Oh, Ilan, good to see you there. Sorry for the delay. Um, Please have a seat, friends, and uh, I'll, I'll have, you have something there. Can you hold them? No, I give it to Sarah instead. Okay, lovely. Okay, let's start here. So, uh, what is it that you have in that bottle? Darko. Thanks for having me. I love Sweden. <laughs> Great to be here. Sweden loves you. <laughs> Tuck. Yeah. Um, this is world's first uh, real honey made without bees. And I know that that sounds crazy, but it's possible. So my name is Darko and we're Melibio, San Francisco-based company delivering the future of honey product that's identical to the ones that bees make, just finally giving bees a break because that's important for this planet. This, so you mean that that's cell ag honey or how, how do you make that? So everything started about 10 years ago when I got my first job and it was in a honey company. So I spent eight years in a traditional uh, bee-powered uh, honey industry where I learned a lot about honey. And that's where I started loving the bees. And a few years ago, I came across studies showing that um, farming bees for honey production is negatively affecting bee biodiversity because farmed bees are taking over territory from wild and native bee species. And when I saw studies like that, I turned vegan overnight because of the bees. I moved from Europe to California and I decided that I'm going to be dedicating my uh, career and life towards the mission of creating the future of honey that's better for humans, that's better for bees, and that's animal free. So what I got here is our prototype of a product that is about to be launched in the US. Um, when we talk about... It's probably totally legal here in Europe, right? So the product, yeah, product is absolutely legal. It's fully plant-based. It's made out of the same plants that bees visit. We just figured out how we can visit the plants by ourselves and turn that into, into honey. Super funky. Now, why is this so important that we can find new ways to sweeten things? It's, of course, because of the global epidemic of metabolic diseases that sugar, the largest crop on the planet, has given rise to. So sugar is something we create, we create the sweetness rather perhaps than sugar, but it has so many negative side effects both on environment and, and our biological entities here. So we need to do something about it. So we picked uh, you know, four of the leading players here in the food tech sector to come and give us a little view of what does the future of sweetness look like? And Dark, you, you basically what you did here is say, yeah, we can produce sweetness in another way uh, than, than just you know, you know, harassing the bees and, and uh, stealing their honey from them. Sweeteners, it's a hundred billion dollars industry. Um, I have a deep opinion that sweet food will never go away. Uh, people will always crave sweet food. Um, when I saw the name of this panel to be uh, Bad White Powder, I was not sure what are you talking about specifically, oh, because we can think of that in different ways. We can, we can. Um, but uh, back, back to sugar, I think uh, we, have, um, you know, we have multiple solutions. Uh, we as a company, we're focused on honey. Honey as a product is mostly sugar, as uh, most of you know, but the beauty of honey comes in the non-sugar part of it, that we were able to recreate delivering the benefits of real honey too. So I think um, what is, why I'm really optimistic about the future of food and future of speed food is we have so many options happening. We have so many ideas and the diversity of ideas, technologies, approaches, it just means that we'll have so many ways to make our uh, food better to make our food aligned with our health and to have our food empower us to live long and happy. 
Lovely. I'll hand it over to, uh, to Sarah there. So, Sarah, uh, what do you think? I'm like, you're the founder of Welly Bites, which is an excellent, excellent, super yummy, tasty candy that I buy Thank every you. day almost. Uh, so, so, how come you, you started developing Welly Bites? Yeah, so I'm a pharmacist um, and a health and diet coach, and I saw the big problems that we see uh, because of sugar, which is diabetes, uh, diabetes, and also diabetes type two, and also obesity. Um, and I felt that we have to do something about this because we are moving towards a more sick planet um, on those two issues. So, how can we produce something? Or how can I produce something that tastes super good and tastes just like the regular candy that we're used to and we like to eat at events and on birthdays and whatever, uh, but that still has the good sweetness without having sugar. So yeah, I started uh, testing, experimenting in my kitchen for a lot of uh, months and uh, developed Welly Bites, uh, which is now the market leader in sugar-free candy in Sweden and uh, is very, very appreciated because it is, as I said, it still has the flavor of a sugar candy, but it's sugar-free. It al it's also vegan, it also uh, has less calories, and is enriched with vitamins and minerals and a lot of other good benefits. But this is super funky because suddenly we realize through Valley Bites and others that, that we can have the sweet experience without having to deal with sugar. And, and James, there is a chance that we can start producing sweet, delicious treats without sugar in the future en masse, right? En masse, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so tell me more about what you're doing at Fatsur. So in, in, uh, I, I've been working with Zalital for the last 25 years. So I, I realized that it's not in Welly Bites, so we have to have a discussion, Sarah, on this one. But Zalital is a great sweetener. It's the same sweetness as sugar. And it's been around for a long time. It's 50 years old. Um, but what Fatsa have done, they set up a new business of Fatsa Food Tech one year ago and they're heading this business. So what, what we've looked at is to, to make xylitol, it, the real difficult part is to get the raw material. So what, what we have in, uh, in Finland is, the, I think it's Europe's biggest oat mill. So when you, when you take the oat from the field, you open it up, you take the kernel, you make flowers, you know, whatever you want from that. But what's left is this kind of light as a feather husk. So we take this husk and we extract from this husk xylose, which is then turned to xylitol. At the same time, we have a biopower plant on site. So the waste stream of our xylitol process goes to a biopower plant, so we're self-sufficient in energy. So it's a complete circular economy process. And what, what that allows us to do is, is to have a kind of zero, um, kind of zero uh, emissions plant, but also then to bring this kind of sweetness to the, the, the wider audience, especially in Nordics and then at a later stage externally. But I think that, you know, sh as you said, sugar is the biggest crop on the planet and we've been using that and, and that need or that requirement for sweet products is not gonna go away, but there are alternatives. And I think what we, what we bring is a choice. So at the coffee desk here, you have a choice of sweetness. You don't have to take sugar. You can have a, a sweetener or you can take you can take honey as well. So I think that, that that's, what we're, that's what we need to bring to the food industry is a choice. Okay, so choice, but, but you can also produce this then at scale in an, uh, you know, from upcycle things. That, well, otherwise they, they would have gone to, I don't know, what would, I, what it, would you have done with it's them otherwise? Typically it's burnt. Burnt, right? It's burnt and, it, yeah. and it's, it's, it's of no use, yeah. So what we've done is take that, that, that waste stream and, and produce this wonderful white powder. This wonderful white powder, the white powder that we want. Ila, let's talk about white powder in the future. Um, because once upon a time, I had this, this aha, uh, when Ilan told me that sugar doesn't have to be carbohydrates, it can be proteins. And that's kind of revealing. Uh, so tell me a bit more, Ilan, what, what is this amide proteins and, and this, thing called sugar in your world, or sweet in your world? So I just don't call it protein, I call it a, I don't call it sugar, sorry, I call it a sweet protein and actually a designer of protein. We are in the business of producing a white powder which makes people happy, but is not only delicious, but it is also good for you, good for our health and good for our environment because sugar is not only 
underlying the metabolic syndrome, something that we have understood only five years ago, and today over 50 countries have already implement uh, sugar taxes because of that, because a metabolic syndrome is obesity, diabetes, fatty liver disease, pancreatic, and, and uh, um, other cancers, mental issues, uh, diseases, and many other uh, things, not to mention tooth decay and other things. So, but sugar is also extremely bad for our planet. It contaminates air, land, and sea. You need to transfer every year 200 million tons of sugar. You need, it's one of the most water consuming and land consuming products, deforestations, herbicide, pesticides, and so much more. So actually with our um, impact plan, which has two quantitative tracks, one on the sustainability part, one on the health tracks, uh, we are going to remove several percent of sugar from the planet by using a protein. You have 200 proteins which are sweet. Actually, in our tears, there is a protein which is sweet. It's masked by the salt in our tears, but it is sweet. But in the jungle, in the depth of the jungle, you have six proteins which are hyper sweet, 700 to 3,000 times sweeter than sugar. They are used already thousands of years, but we don't use them because of three issues. Number one, they're extremely expensive. Number two, they're not stable. And number three, they have a lingering taste. So what we did is to solve these issues, to produce the first delicious protein, which is cheaper than sugar and is stable and fit for the market. Following the sustainability, we actually just won the Extreme Tech Challenge. Extreme Tech Challenge is a top impact competition in the world, 2,000 startups in uh, 10 different categories. We won the food tech and ag tech category. And in a couple of weeks, we are going to the ceremony to celebrate the win with Bill Gates and a thousand other influencers. So what is our protein? What we did is to apply AI computational protein design. I opened the MI after publishing what became the main book in the field. What we do is computationally, we design novel proteins proteins which actually mimic life in harsh conditions. You have life in the Dead Sea, in hot springs, deep in the ocean, in acidic swamps. In all of these places, you have proteins which are more fit to the mass food market, which is very harsh conditions for a protein. So we made the world's sweetest protein, which is the most stable one. We are working with a number of multinationals with whom we have either joint grants or fee-bearing agreements with some of them. We have already three or four such agreements. Companies like Danone, like PepsiCo, like Ocean Spray, like Mars Wrigley, working from beverages. And here, for example, you can see the cranberry juice that we did with um, Ocean Spray or, or other things such as our iced tea, where we reduce between 40 and 70 percent of the sugar without anyone noticing that it is not a full sugar formulation. We are not competing with a diet market, we are competing with a sugar market. And we all want delicious taste, and we all don't want the sugar, and we try to solve the sugar paradox of enjoying sugar but knowing it's a new tobacco. We are launching in the first half of 23, already going to remove thousands of tons of sugar from the market. Every kilogram that we make reduces is equivalent to three or four tons of sugar ha huh. so, so so let's let's take this again the protein sweeteners that you produce are cheaper than sugar yes because a ton of sugar is fluctuating price but on average cost four hundred dollars so if one kilogram of our protein let's take the worst case scenario replaces three tons of sugar, then as long as we are cheaper than three tons of sugar, so one kilogram should be cheaper than $1,200, we can be cheaper than sugar in sweetness units. Actually, to make a protein in such prices is not such a big challenge. You have proteins that sell for an order of magnitude cheaper. And this is done by precision fermentation. We grow the proteins using a brewery using fungi, filamentous fungi, unicellular fungi, namely yeast, 
they are our factory. We are manufactured by biology by the same uh, factory, the ribosome that makes all proteins, amino acid after amino acid. We have a chain of amino acids, nothing else. And it is safe. We did all of the studies for that, allogenicity, genotoxicity, permeability, and so on. The big companies are already happy to enjoy it. We are getting the official regulatory clearance in the beginning of next year. Super cool. So, James, uh, I don't know at Silitol if that is as cheap as sugar yet. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. But it's the same sweetness as sugar. So, what, what I think that what I think that Amaya are doing and, and what others are doing is to replace sugar. You, you, there's either you replace the sweetness or you replace the bulk. And I think what Amaya are doing is replacing that sweetness. But you also, which is in beverage, which is okay. But if you want to make something that has some body or some texture, like a uh, you need some a, a fiber, right? you, you need you need some body there. So actually, we have very complementary technologies here, where one is providing bulk and one is providing sweetness. I think At the end of the day, um, sweetness is a story of blends. If you want to go to sugar elimination, we can enable sugar reduction 40 to 70 percent. We don't do sugar elimination. Xylitol is a low intensity sweetener. We are a very high intensity sweetener, which is a different ball game. And we work closely together with other sweeteners, whether it is stevia or other high intensity sweeteners, or whether it is low intensity sweeteners, or whether it is bulking agents such as dietary fibers. We have a food technology team led by the former CTO of SodaStream, and a, we have an in house sensory panel of 20 super tasters that come twice a week to taste what we do in a blind way to make sure we are comparable to sugar. But this is so good news for me because I'm, I have a sweet tooth, but I cannot eat sugar because of my metabolic condition. But that means that I actually, in the future, together with all the rest of the roughly half of the planet's population, can actually enjoy sweetness. Uh, so, so what would you guys say? You know, when will we kill sugar? No, when will sugar die as we know it? I mean, I don't think it's going to die completely uh, ever, but I think we, we already see a lot of uh, substitutes, and I think that's just going to uh, accelerate even more. And I think that's the, the hopeful part of the future, that, that there are so much uh, good companies coming up, but also bigger, larger companies that can affect, that actually are making that transition now and studying, and it's... it's uh, Super interesting to hear Pfizer doing what they're doing. So, yeah, I think it's gonna decrease quite rapidly. But I don't think it's gonna. It's gonna go, not gonna yeah, go, yeah, go away totally, completely. Yeah. No, no, yeah. of course, if you're gonna. It's the other way around. It's not that we will kill sugar. K sugar is killing us. It's the opposite. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but the question is, how much is it growing? And already, that you have quite a few sections, especially in countries implementing sugar taxation, where the sweet beverage segment is going down drastically. People want to enjoy sweetness, but they're not willing to pay the price of sugar overconsumption in the metabolic system. So we're going to dry, so, so when we have a honey, honey tax, then, Darko, what's going to happen then? Then you will sell a lot of that. I think, you know, back to, you know, history and hu human psychology, people li love sweet food. Um, having different options and being mindful about volume that we consume, I think, is the way forward. I think um, intrinsically we're doing something wrong with the food industry, and I, when I say we, I think the humankind, which is um, we take certain complex con uh, concepts and products and either make them heroes or villains, and it's not binary like that. It's not binary. There needs to be more nuancing to this. So um, I think you know we should be open. I don't know if you're open to taste this honey. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. To be among the oh, I, I first few, yeah, 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 to be among the first few in Europe to taste this, and uh, let me know what you think about it. Tastes like honey. <laughs> That's the whole point. So science can take us way beyond that we can imagine, and I'm very, very excited about even the next few years of the future of food, because uh, what we are about to create, all of us here today, is something that is gonna change the world and set us 
on a sustainable path to nutritiously feed 10 billion people that this planet will hold 2050. I must command all of you in this panel for your excellent jobs in replacing sugar, because sugar is really the heroin of modern times. And more people are dying from sugar than from heroin, that's for sure. And we need to rapidly uh, you know, move sugar out of the equation. And thank you for doing such an amazing job. Thank you, Elon, for this. Thank you, Darko, for, for your honey. Thank you, Sarah, for Welly Bites, which I use every day. And thank you so much, James, for, for, for upcycling and showing that oats is, is not just good for, for breakfast, but also for sweetening the breakfast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, very good then. A big round of applause for the future of non-sugar sweetening. Uh, okay, so it's actually time for, uh, we're a little late, so it's actually time for a demo. Um, what 